Good afternoon uh, to our colleagues in, in Europe. Uh, good morning, colleagues in, in America. And uh, good evening, uh, colleagues in Asia. Um, this is our global um, huddles uh, that we've been doing for the last three days. This is the last one of this uh, kickoff study uh, although I'm sure that we will have our opportunities to talk again in the future. It's been uh, four intensive days um, where we have uh, been updating you on the uh, progress uh, that uh, we have been making and sadly enough also about the progress that uh, this um, uh, crippling disease has been making in parallel to our work. There are now more than 680,000 uh, cases worldwide with the US now leading staggeredly the, um, the podium uh, with more than 120,000 cases and, uh, and other countries um, in Europe and in Asia um, going just behind it and more than 32,000 deaths, uh, 32,000 uh, human lives that have been lost to this disease. Um, we are, our feelings are with all the victims and, and with all the people who are uh, fighting, taking care of these patients and fighting this condition worldwide. We have been busy, we have been working on four different streams. We've done a lot of work on phenotyping, uh, coronavirus disease on phenotyping uh, outcomes that matter for this condition, like uh, the need for mechanical ventilation, uh, adult respiratory distress syndrome, and other uh, phenotypes that uh, are really relevant for the studies that we're doing. We have been doing studies on characterization, looking at uh, what uh, sort of uh, presentation these patients have and what are their outcomes and the treatments they receive. Uh, we have been doing work on prediction, um, and we have been doing also uh, work on the safety of uh, the medicines that are being uh, trialed uh, for this uh, treatment for this condition and also for the um, and also looking at, at the preparation of packages uh, to look at the efficacy of those treatments uh, once we have more data on coronavirus. In parallel to this, of course, there has been a, a whole machinery of people helping us with creating a data network for this analysis, incorporating data as it comes, and there have been a uh, lot of effort and, and a lot of incredible people working really hard 24-7 for the last few days uh, to uh, keep the data coming and to keep uh, uh, updating us with, with their findings. These were the timelines that we had for the studies. So um, as I said on the first day, this is a kind of Gantt charts that I usually write for a three year grant. Uh, and that here we were brave enough to write for a four day uh, activity. But of course, we had a, a team of more than 300 scientists from across the world who were really dedicated to making this happen. Uh, we started with protocol writing. Uh, we started writing the background section and preparing template manuscripts uh, for our findings. Uh, and, uh, and then we started preparing analytical packages and running them uh, to match what we said in the protocol we would do. We had uh, to then review the diagnostics that we were getting, agree on the strategy going forward and then finalize the protocols. And uh, we were hoping to have results, uh, but by some time uh, today to start writing them up and then disseminating them in the form of a shiny application, a web app. Unfortunately, there's a lot of uh, orange color still in this uh, Gantt chart. There's a lot of analytical packages still running. There's a lot of diagnostics still to be reviewed, and there's a lot of work still to be done. Um, so we're going to have a, a, a relatively short meeting this one, uh, and we're going to go back to work and see whether we can deliver on all those things uh, by midnight tonight UK time. I'm going to hand over to Patrick now, who is uh, going to tell you a bit more about the events that uh, we are preparing uh, for the closure of our study uh, later tonight. Thanks, Danny. Yeah, it's been an amazing uh, four days uh, collaborating with all of you on various studies um, to, to think about what Danny just said, an ambitious three year plan that he would normally tackle. And we've tried to do it in three days. Um, and uh, while we um, uh, are continuing to push very, very hard, I think everybody does need to take a second and reflect about what amazing progress we've been able to make as a community and what is possible when we collaborate together towards a shared important problem. To celebrate that collaboration, uh, our final call of the study-a-thon uh, will be at 7 o'clock Eastern time, which is uh, 11 p.m. 
uh, GMT, midnight in the UK, 1 a.m. in Central European time, and 8 a.m. Uh, Korean Standard Time. At our next update call, we will be holding a live event that is going to be open to the general public. So in addition to our collaborators, we're going to be posting and communicating to the world that they should come and see all of the tremendous progress that we've made as a community. At that meeting, we will be summarizing the tremendous work that's been made across this entire endeavor during the study-a-thon, summarizing the designs and preliminary results from all of our analyses. Uh, we, we recognize that all of you have made tremendous sacrifices in terms of your time and energy to put into this. And so we really hope that you will come to our final uh, finale update event to celebrate with us all of the tremendous accomplishments. I also want to put a plug out, though, that many of us have family and friends who have sacrificed along with us to uh, take care of things on the home front uh, and to make sure that uh, we could actually put our time and energy into this. So I want to encourage all of you who have friends and family who have been wondering what the heck you've been doing for the last four days, um, have them come join uh, our final event and come see all of the tremendous science that you've been leading in the design and development. Um, we have a lot to be proud of, and I'm extremely excited to share the results that we've generated and some of the preliminary findings that I'm starting to see come from each of our different work groups. I do want to reinforce and continue to, 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 to highlight that this study-a-thon is not the, this finale is not the end of our story. It's the end of our weekend. It's the start of our journey. And it's important to recognize that our goal with this weekend was actually to come together, find people who want to collaborate to develop appropriate solutions to these problems, and start the journey of designing appropriate studies, creating scientific best practices, establishing analytic uh, um, packages that implement those best practices, and then get a network of sites to be able to generate results that we can compile together to answer the important questions that matter to this, uh, to matter to public health. And so while we are going to celebrate some of the preliminary results that we're generating, I wanna be 100% clear, this is just to celebrate the tremendous work we've done over the last three or four days. Um, but also to hopefully reinforce the importance of what we need to be doing together. We will be continuing to design out our analyses for characterization, estimation, and prediction. We will be continuing to test these packages. We will be continuing to use our data partners uh, uh, and using their participation to execute these packages. We will be continuing to compile results long after this weekend ends. But what we're going to be celebrating tonight is the power of community, the power of what we've done as an open science forum where 300 people could spend some time together and make great things happen that none of us could have possibly done by ourselves. So I encourage you all to come to our finale, our study-a-thon finale event at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, midnight UK, 1 a.m. Central Eastern Time, 8 a.m. Korean Standard Time to celebrate with us as we walk through the incredible scientific designs of analyses and the preliminary results that we've found to try to inform public health and improve health decisions for around the world. With that, um, if anybody has questions for us, um, we're happy to uh, answer them on the live chat. Uh, what one question has come in. So how, how does everybody get access to the live event? So you'll actually see a, a posting from Craig Saxon um, shortly that will be posted on Odyssey forums as well as at odyssey.org slash COVID-19 updates that actually provides a link for how anybody out there who has not been part of our MS Teams environment will be able to just join and listen to the live event. For those of you who are in MS Teams, you'll continue to uh, get that get that link that you're able to click on. So that will be the same meeting, just like you've always had. You'll be receiving that. Um, but if you have friends and families who would be interested in, in seeing what you've been up to for the weekend and seeing what this community has been accomplished, we encourage you to share the communication that's going to come out from Craig shortly. Um, an, another question uh, has come up about um, submitting disclosure forms for publication, and, and uh, thank you, Christoph, for bringing that up. I, I want to clarify this. 
So our goal with all of this is to do open community dissemination of our results. And we absolutely want to recognize the contributions of everybody who's been made. Um, over the next several days, we're going to be making a very clear policy to be clear about how that recognition is going to take place. But I want to assure everybody, particularly those who are you know, uh, um, interested in making sure that there's an appropriate recognition for their contribution through things such as co-authorship of peer review publications, that our, our strong desire and our, our core focus to this is to create an inclusive and just process. So if you are somebody who feels you have satisfied the IJCME authorship guidelines, rest assured we want to make sure that you are being recognized in this work. And in fact, if you've been working so hard that you didn't even have a chance to put yourself on the list of a study that you've made meaningful contributions, rest assured we're gonna be making sure that we try to capture and recognize all the contributions that people have made. Um, we will be actually trying to communicate some very explicit policy about how that recognition is going to happen. But I can tell you, at least right now, uh, what we're erring on the side of is figure out how to be inclusive as possible. You've heard George Ripsack and, and Martin Shumi and I present multiple times that we have great inspiration coming from uh, the CERN effort, where rather than having a bunch of physicists individually writing single authored papers that barely move science forward, they recognized what the need was, was to bring thousands of researchers together to do high quality work that's fundamentally transformed science. I firmly believe that what we are doing right now in Odyssey is the Large Hadron Collider of observational research and of medicine. And so I think we are absolutely trying to borrow from this idea of an inclusive culture where everybody deserves recognition for the important contributions they make throughout the analysis life cycle. And so we will be trying to communicate more clearly about that, but I want everyone to know that if you're making contributions, we want to make sure that your contributions are well, well recognized and visible. And we want to thank you all sincerely for those contributions that you've made. We've got a question about the GitHub repository and the characterization study. So there's there's two things that are working on in parallel right now. Um, it, for those of you who have access to your data through Atlas, you can run the characterization analysis in your Atlas platform, and you may be able to see results from, from that. There is also a GitHub repository, um, and it's actively being tested right now. So currently it's on uh, Ed Burns' um, personal GitHub repo, and I think that there's a, a few issues that are just being worked out to test to make sure it runs seamlessly across the community. Uh, the link will be posted. Um, it's in the characterization channel. Um, but specifically, if you are a data partner and you're looking for the right code to communicate, um, I know that Kristen and Talita are working really hard to make sure that those who are ready to run something are pointing themselves to the right package. So rather than anybody just grabbing code that they think that might be working, I would encourage if you're looking for where is the right code to run, reach out to Kristen and Talita and they'll help you, uh, help you navigate that process. Another question is about this MS Teams um, platform that we're using. And is this, is the work that we're doing gonna still be available? Um, so yes, um, I wanna have a very specific shout out and thank you to Erasmus MC, to Peter, Mace, uh, Henrik, and the entire support team that's actually created this MS Teams collaborative environment for us to use in Odyssey. Um, Peter uh, uh, shared that we will indeed be keeping the MS Teams environment uh, open for all of the, the collaborators who are in here. Uh, and we, we very much expect, as we've said, this journey is not ending, it's just starting. So we, I, I think we found that this MS Teams environment has worked very effectively. Um, and so we're excited to continue to use it. Um, certainly through the, through the continuation and develop, uh, completion of the studies that we have ongoing. Uh, and I think we're quite open-minded that this might be a really effective collaboration platform for Odyssey more generally. So don't anybody worry about uh, uh, feeling like they got to download everything out of this app uh, by the end of the night. It's not going away anywhere tonight. You'll still have access to it tomorrow. Uh, and we're really looking forward to using this as a sustainable resource for our COVID-19 efforts. Uh, Wojtek asked the question, how many sites with COVID uh, data do we expect by the end of the study-a-thon? Um, so uh, stay tuned tonight. 
uh, you'll actually get a complete summary breakdown of our data network of who who's actually signed up and who's participated that Kristen will be able to share with everybody. Um, but I think it's also important when we talk about the data network, let's not think narrowly about who did something today, but let's think broadly about what is that data network going to look like today, tomorrow, and in the coming weeks and months. And we're really excited to see how many data partners who have signed up and are participating now with their historical data, just as much as we're excited about those who have come to the fold with current COVID data. But we also are excited about those partners who are making active efforts right now to refresh their data so that they'll be able to meaningfully contribute to our analyses in the next very short interval of time. And so you'll hear from Kristen tonight summarizing where did we end up with the Odyssey data network for the COVID effort. You'll hear about that at the kickoff tonight. All right. Well, if not, we have eight more hours to our study-a-thon event. I really look forward to seeing you all at uh, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, midnight UK, 1 a.m. Central European Time, and 8 a.m. Korean Standard Time. Uh, we have amazing contributions for this community to showcase and amazing preliminary results that I think are going to really um, demonstrate the power of observational data to inform this pandemic. So please come, come join us for our finale and let's celebrate together the power that a community can have. Thank you all very much. We'll see you in a few hours. Thank you.